In 1994, German police went on a raid. They were looking for fake banknotes, but they found something far more sinister. Sealed in a canister were several grams of radioactive plutonium, the material needed to build a nuclear bomb. The discovery set off a scientific detective story which was to stretch halfway round the world. These canisters hold plutonium. If the energy locked in them were released all at once, the result would be an explosion. So every canister is individually marked and accounted for. Under highly controlled conditions, nuclear power stations release the energy slowly to make electricity. The energy and radioactivity come from the plutonium nucleus. The nucleus of every atom is made up from protons and neutrons, about the same number of each. The nuclei of most atoms stay like this forever, but radioactive nuclei are unstable. They're like pieces of popcorn waiting to pop. Once in its life, a radioactive nucleus decays and throws out part of itself as radiation. Some atoms throw out a pair of protons and a pair of neutrons together as a particle. This is alpha radiation. In another nucleus, a neutron might suddenly change into a proton, throwing out an electron at the same time. This is beta radiation. Gamma radiation is an electromagnetic wave with very high energy. It's sometimes given off by a nucleus which has just decayed in another way, as the nucleus struggles to make itself stable. Atoms of the same type always decay in the same way, so it's often possible to work out what type of atom is involved by detecting and measuring radiation. The radiation is a telltale clue to the atom which created it. In Britain, radioactive materials are strictly controlled. The National Radiological Protection Board helps companies to use them safely. Because we can't actually detect radiation ourselves, we can't hear it, smell it, uh, or taste it, we need something that will do that job for us. This is a basic radiation monitoring instrument. The clicking you can hear is due to natural background radiation. Radiation hits this probe and causes this box here to click and this meter tells us how many of those clicks are happening every second. Before I go out to visit a company, I need to check that the radiation monitoring instrument that I'm using is actually working correctly. What I do is take a source of known activity, bring the detection head right up to that source, and as you can hear, this one seems to be functioning correctly. Alpha, beta and gamma radiation have different properties. Alpha radiation doesn't travel far in air. A sheet of paper will usually stop the alpha particles completely. Beta radiation is more penetrating. Paper has little effect. But beta particles find it difficult to pass through denser materials like perspex. Gamma radiation is the most penetrating of all. Only very dense materials, like lead, will greatly reduce gamma rays. The plutonium discovered in Germany was found in a garage belonging to a businessman, Adolf Jekyll. When he was arrested, he boasted that he knew where 50 kilograms more plutonium was hidden, but he refused to say where. He also refused to say what the plutonium was for, but the best guess seems to be international terrorism. Information on nuclear weapons is now widely available. 
Getting hold of plutonium is much more difficult. So how did Yakely do it? The German police sent his canister to the country's top secret Transuranium Institute for tests. Short Circuit was refused permission to film inside, but we have been able to reconstruct some of the techniques which were used to track down the source of the plutonium. Low levels of radioactivity come from many everyday objects. The right equipment can identify its source. Most of the time we do actually know the sorts of radioactive materials that we're handling, but uh, from time to time we do end up with items that arrive in the laboratory. Because I don't know the hazards at the moment, I take the precaution of putting gloves on. This is an old compass. And the interesting thing about this compass is that it does contain radioactive material. Instruments like this, which were used about the time of World War I, often had luminizing material painted on the face to allow people to read the dials in darkness. People often have the, the common misconception that radioactive material glows in the dark. That's not true. What's happening in this case is that radioactive material is giving off radiation and striking another material, which is then giving off light. Finding out exactly which radioactive material is in the compass needs more sensitive equipment. This laboratory identifies radioactive elements from the gamma rays they produce. I've put the compass in a lead-lined chamber to cut out all the background radiation. And what the computer's doing is that it's measuring the gamma rays that the compass is giving out and the energy that the gamma rays are carrying. As it detects each gamma ray, the computer sorts it into a pile depending on its energy. After a while, a telltale pattern builds up. This pattern of peaks here is like a fingerprint for each element, and I can tell that the element from the compass is radium. Radium was used in the early part of this century for making things like compasses glow in the dark, but nowadays there are somewhat better methods to use. Tests revealed that the plutonium in Adolf Jäkler's garage came from a nuclear power plant. But where? The evidence points towards the Russian Federation, a group of countries that formed part of the old Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. In the early 1990s, the Union broke up and things came close to chaos. Incidents like the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear plant had already revealed a poor record for nuclear safety. Now, international borders were left open, giving criminals the chance to sell stolen plutonium to terrorists who wanted to build a bomb. It seems Yekla was a middleman who planned to take his cut from deals along the way. The Yekla incident underlines the need to control and use radioactive materials responsibly, for good rather than evil. <laughs>